Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to install a Bug Flector 2 from AVS on a 2019 Ford Ranger. Before I start, I want to make it clear I am not affiliated with uh, AVS, the manufacturer of this deflector at all, nor am I affiliated with Ford. I bought this truck myself and this is the deflector I chose to put on there after doing a bunch of research. Now, you may be curious what a debug deflector is in the first place. Well, they serve two purposes. The first is they protect the front of the hood, which is generally a painted surface, from rock chips and debris from the road. You can see from this clip from my other vehicle that has never had a deflector on that its front of the hood is really all pitted up and full of rock chips and dents and dings. And I wanna keep this hood looking nice. So I put this deflector on here. It's a cheap way to make sure that the paint stays nice at the very front of the truck. The second thing that they do is they deflect bugs so that they don't come racing right up your hood and into your windshield. They change the airflow a little bit so that bugs have a tendency instead of hitting your windshield, they are thrown right over the top of the truck and you wind up with cleaner windshields on road trips. Now, truth be told, I've never actually owned a vehicle with a deflector on it. So this will be a great way for me to find out just how effective they are. But this particular deflector does get great reviews on all of the different places that I could find. And that's one of the main reasons I went with this one. The other main reason I did is because many of the other deflectors for this truck in particular are the kind that are installed with double sticky tape. They just tape straight to the top of your hood. And I don't really love the idea of taping something this large on my brand new beautiful paint on my truck. So I like this one because it mounts under your hood using the factory mount points for the rubber seal, the weather seal on your truck that's already there in the first place. It's really simple to install. I'll walk you through the entire process. Let's get started. So this deflector comes with a nice set of instructions as well as these little bump stops we'll be using to protect the paint behind the deflector. And it also comes with a bunch of these little connectors that you'll be using to replace the fasteners that you remove from the truck during the installation. In addition to these things, you're also going to need a couple of things to do the install. The first is a Phillips screwdriver and a panel removal tool like this. Some people call them a little cat's claw. If you don't have something like this, then when you remove the fasteners that are connected underneath your hood, uh, you're gonna have a much more difficult time getting them out. So I'll leave a link in the description down below for this particular little fastener. It was really inexpensive and totally worth getting, even if it's just for this one job. Finally, I'm gonna be using a little bit of sticky tack to mark the fasteners that I need to remove from the truck. Um, the instructions say to use a grease pencil, but I prefer not to write on my brand new truck, even with a grease pencil, so we're gonna use that instead. And finally, you're gonna to want to have a beach towel or a large blanket, and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, let's get started. So the first step in getting this installed correctly is to wash the truck. And you'll wanna make sure you pay particular attention to the front part of the hood and make sure that when you're drying it off, you dry not only the top of the hood, but also crack the hood open and dry off underneath as well. We don't want any water in the way of the installation. Now, as soon as you've got that hood raised, it's a good idea to throw a blanket or a large beach towel right over the top of your engine bay. And the reason is because we're gonna be removing a bunch of connectors from the underside of the hood up here. And if you drop them, you don't want them to drop down into the engine compartment. You will never find them. Okay, with the hood raised, now we'll take the deflector and we'll place it on the hood. And we'll make a note of which positions the holes for these little connectors are in so that we can remove the corresponding connectors that are under the hood. Make sure that this is gonna fit properly. It looks like it's gonna be a good fit. And all the holes will line up. Now the instructions say for this part to use a grease pencil to mark your hole locations. But I'm just gonna use a little piece of sticky tack to mark where my holes line up because there are far more connectors from the factory to the underside of this hood than there are for the deflector. So as a result, it'll be a little hard to know which connectors specifically you need to remove unless you mark which ones the holes line up with in the bug flector. I hope all of that's making sense. Bottom line, find a way to mark where your holes are located 
so that you can tell which corresponding connectors to remove. Okay, so now that I've removed the bug shield, I can see that I need to take out this connector because there's my mark, and this connector because here's my mark, etc. But I don't need to take out this one or this one or these two. You can see there are quite a few connectors under this hood. Okay, with all the connectors marked that we know we need to remove, now we'll just use our little panel removal tool, or cat's paw, to get up underneath that connector and pop it right out. And I dropped it. And that's exactly why you need to have that towel under there. These little connectors are kind of fiddly, but they do come out easily with the right tool. So here are the replacement fasteners we'll be using. Before we can attach them though, you need to take the screw part out so you have the receptacle itself separated. And these receptacles are gonna go up underneath the rubber trim under the hood and into the holes that you just removed the factory fasteners from. With all the factory fasteners removed, the next step is to place the guard in close to its installation position here making sure that each of these tabs on the underside of the guard go underneath the rubber from the factory. But if you don't do it this way, you'll have trouble getting your hood to close after this is installed. Okay, so then you take these little receptacles that you just took the screw out of, and you'll put them through the hole in the bottom of the deflector and up into the factory hole underneath this rubber. Then we're gonna take the screw and we're gonna put it through the hole in the rubber. And this is a little bit fiddly. And making sure that that backer does not come out, we'll then use our Phillips head screwdriver to screw that fastener all the way in. Just snug it down. You need to do that on all eight of them. Once all those fasteners are in, don't forget to come back and either erase your grease pencil marks or just pull off your little pieces of sticky tack like I did here. And then you can double check, make sure you haven't dropped anything or left anything on your towel or blanket. Take it out of your engine compartment. Then finally check your hood compartment, make sure you haven't left anything in there. And then we're gonna close this for the first time. You will find probably that since you now have that extra thickness of this shield coming underneath your hood, that it might be a little bit tight when you close it. So close it pretty firmly and it should have no trouble latching. Just like that. And the final step of the installation is to use these little bump stops and install them in areas of the hood where you think the deflector will possibly flex down and touch the paint. This corner seems like a likely spot we might have some touching. So I'm gonna stick one right about there. Good. Make sure you reach under there and push those firmly onto your hood. Finally, if you're anything like me, you don't really love having extra badging on your car. So I'm just gonna peel that right off of there. And there we go. All right, so with a quick wipe down to remove all of my fingerprints and smudges I put all over it during the installation, it's finished. And I think it looks great. It matches the truck really well. It looks like it's supposed to be there. And I'm really looking forward to not having to stop to clean my windshield on long road trips all the time anymore. You should expect to spend maybe 15, 20 minutes doing the uh, complete installation start to finish, assuming you have all of those tools I showed at the beginning. In particular, if you don't have one of those little cat's paw, the little tool that I used to remove those clips under the hood from the factory, you're gonna need a little bit more time because those are really difficult to get out without the correct tool. Well, hey, if you've enjoyed this video or learned a little something, you can let me know about 
how much you liked it by hitting the like button down there. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, you can think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there. And if you feel like I did this completely wrong or there's a better way to do it, I would love to know about that down in the comments as well. I'm gonna leave you now with some kind of gratuitous dolly shots of this thing under the lights to show you just how good it looks. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. pretty strong. I think it will do a good job protecting from rocks and bugs and now I just put more fingerprints on it. Dang it. <laughs> Comments as well. And more than anything though, I want to know... One more try. One more try.